Welcome to Monday Morning Dose of Hope. I'm your host, Tammy Rotzel, and today we're going to continue our series on forgiveness as we talk about how forgiveness sets you free. So grab those earbuds and your favorite beverage and join me for today's show. Hi friend, happy Monday. Welcome back. I am so excited to have you here. It means the world to me that you choose to show up each and every week. Before we get started, I want to remind you that wherever you are listening, whether you're listening on your favorite podcast player or watching on YouTube, be sure to uh, subscribe to the show. And at the end of the show, if this has blessed you at all, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. It would mean the world to me. Also, be sure to like and comment if you're watching on YouTube. I love connecting with all of you. So be sure to do that. And as always, if you ever have any questions, be sure to uh, send me an email at Tammy, or excuse me, Tammy at footprintsofinspiration.com. So let's get started with today's show. So one of my favorite quotes on forgiveness is by a man named Louis B. Smeads. I believe that's how you pronounce his last name. And he says, to forgive is to set a prisoner free and discover that prisoner was you. You know, so often we get so tied up in all of it and it becomes our way of, I don't want to say way of life, but almost like we are so used to sitting in the anger, pain, um, hatred, bitterness, guilt, shame, all of those feelings that we don't even realize that we've, we've been living in it. We've been camped out in it and, and it starts to form kind of this bondage. We become uh, chained to these feelings of unforgiveness or these feelings that unforgiveness brings. So let's set aside for just a moment the fact that we know we need to forgive. We all know that, right? We, we know that. But knowing it and feeling it are two very different things. Here's the thing I want you to keep in mind, friend, is that, you know, we live in a world where we are, we are surrounded by earthly desires. And, and, and even ourselves, we have these desires of our flesh. It is so easy or we're so used to immediately going through to those desires of the flesh, meaning, and when we're talking about unforgiveness, that, oh, well, what about them? What about what they did to me? They need to pay for what they did to me, or they're not even sorry for what they did to me. Or the fact that we sit and we get so used to living in guilt and shame and our past mistakes and um, bad choices. We feel we owe it to God to live there. And that's not at all what God planned for us. So in the power of praying for your adult children, Stormy Martian writes, negative thoughts, emotions, and attitudes can be a ploy of the enemy to destroy a person by causing a torment of the soul that is very real and serious. I mean, think about that. How often we, we are tormented by these feelings and emotions we are sitting in. She continues on and says a person can deliberately invite the enemy in with their own disobedience and rebelliousness. Rebellion begins as a bad attitude that never gets created. In other words, rebellion in choosing to sit in that sin, choosing to indulge in those feelings that we're having is rebellion. It's rebellious. It becomes more and more established at, as it can, is continually given place in their life or in your life. Excuse me. And then she goes down a little bit further and says, rebellion is, is the path to personal destruction. A right attitude has no rebellion whatsoever attached to it. I mean, that is so true. We, we, um, we don't mean to rebel. We don't intend to sit in it. And we certainly don't want to feel this pain and stuff. And yet, because that bad attitude, because that rebellion of choosing not to forgive someone or forgive ourselves, it grows. You know, it starts out as this little kind of little seed and it festers and it grows and it grows and it grows. And we've got to learn how to be set free from it. Because man, oh man, when it grows 
you know, and when it's been growing, excuse me, for so many years, it takes a while to process that. It takes some time to walk through that. So we've talked about this before, and I'm just going to mention it again, and, I'm, and, and I know it's not going to be the last time I mention it, but sin, or excuse me, unforgiveness is a sin. There are no hierarchies of sin. Sin is sin is sin. There are no, you know, there's not this table of, okay, this is the worst sin, and this is the least sin. No, all sin is is the same. The Bible tells us that, and I apologize. I don't have that scripture up here, but you can look that up, Google it, and uh, look that up. But there are no hierarchies of sin, no categories of sin. And choosing to sit in unforgiveness is a sin. It's a sin. We don't mean to. We don't intend to. And yet, we choose to sit in it. And another one of Stormy's books, and I forgive me because I'm not sure which one this is from, but uh, she states, unrepented sin invites evil into our lives. It keeps us from all God has for us. God will allow us to be miserable until we give up the sin in favor of living his way. Let me repeat that again. God will allow us to be miserable until we give up the sin in favor of of living his way. Surrendering the past so we can enter into the fullness and glory of God and what he has planned for us. We need to surrender the past. We need to surrender our feelings, our emotions, our anger, guilt, shame, hatred. We need to surrender that to God so that we can live in the fullness of him, so that we can live in his glory and experience his glory and the fullness of life that he uh, has planned for us. In Matthew chapter 16, verses 24 and 25, it says here, then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, own way. I didn't say own. I think I Pulled a little Wisconsin accent into there. Let me start that over again. Then Jesus said to his disciples, if any of you wants to be my follower, you must give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. If you try to hang on to your life, you will lose it. But if you give up your life for my sake, you will save it. When we're talking about forgiveness, we must choose to give up our own way. What is our own way? Indulging in that pain. Friend, I'm not saying that this is easy. I'm not for saying, excuse me, I'm not saying that I don't have these same feelings. I've said it before and I'm going to say it again. I, I'm right here in the trenches with you. This isn't easy. This is something, as we've been talking about in this series, we have to stretch that forgiveness muscle. We have to keep making that choice to forgive over and over and over again until our heart catches up with the spirit. We need to, we, or excuse me, we want to, or if we want to, follow God. If we want to walk through this and be released of these feelings, these, this turmoil that we've been living in, we have to set aside our old way of doing things because as Dr. Phil has said, How's that working for you? Sitting in the pain of unforgiveness, sitting in the hatred, the, the, you know, those feelings, those emotions, how's that working for you? I've said it many times, and we know this. We, we know this, and you've heard it said over and over and over again that God is with us always. But you know what? When we're living in that pain, when we're living in those emotions, when we feel alone and isolated and desperate, and weary, it's, that can seem really trite when someone says that, right? It, it, it feels like it's just, oh, okay, just, let's just slap another verse on this, or oh, let's just slap this common, you know, Christianese on that, that God is always with you, and he, you know, you're never alone. But here's the thing, friend, is when you start making the choice to walk through this, when you start making the choice to seek God and pursue him, that's when you discover that these are not just trite sayings, that they really are true, that, they, that everything we know about God is true. 
that we can get through this. We can walk through forgiveness and experience the healing he has for us when we lean into him and pursue him and seek him and make that ask. You know, when we're hurt by someone or we hurt ourselves, you know, making bad choices, mistakes again and again, or we're tied by these diseases of addiction and, you know, all the things, there's this vulnerability about us. And Satan loves that. He, you know, vulnerability in us is just a wide open door that Satan just comes cruising through and uses. He uses it against us over and over and over again. And that's when we have to remember, we have to take that step back and remember, wait a minute, I know, I recognize these feelings that I'm having. They're not coming from God because that's not the kind of God we serve. I recognize this. I know this because I am a child of God. And because I'm a child of God, what does that mean? That I have been given all authority over Satan. So it's in those times when we're feeling vulnerable, excuse me, where we can recognize and lift up a prayer. Oh God, thank you. Thank you for reminding me that this isn't coming from you. Thank you for reminding me that I have authority. When I use Jesus' name, I have authority over Satan. I have authority to say, get back, Satan. You have no room in my life. Get back, Satan, because I'm going to choose to walk in forgiveness. I'm going to choose to stand up out of the muck and mess and hard, hard feelings I'm going to stand up. I'm not going to be vulnerable to you anymore. I'm not going to be vulnerable and controlled by these emotions anymore. You know, something uh, one of my friends says, Abby Reich, Rackenbaugh, whom I adore. And by the way, if you haven't listened to her episode, it's not available on YouTube, but you can actually go back and listen to it on your favorite podcast player. She's one of the first, uh, first four or five uh, episodes there. But one of the things that Abby Wright says is, you know, um, feelings are not facts. Feelings are not facts. And this is something so powerful, something you need to remember when you're trying to walk in forgiveness, when you feel yourself being hurt over and over and over again by something someone did a long time ago. Because man, isn't that what happens? We continue to live in it. We continue, like Satan will bring it up over and over and over again. And that's when we can say, we can stand up, recognize it, and say, ah, I'm a child of God, Satan. You're no match for my God. You are no match for my God. Something that's really important to remember when we're talking about forgiveness, whether it's for, you know, we're forgiving someone else or trying to forgive ourselves, is that we put these godly expectations on, our, on, on both ourselves and other people around us. And this was really powerful and really uh, came true for me when I was walking through just the hurt and the shame. Both my husband and I were walking through this, you know, with the chronic illness. And, you know, I, it dawned on me when we were having a conversation one day, we had a very frank candid conversation with each other about, you know, look, this is where you hurt me in this and, and vice versa. We did this, you know, we said this to each other. And one of the things was in case you, you missed that episode, which I highly recommend going back. That episode is actually also on your favorite podcast player, but it, um, you know, one of the things we said, like for me, my husband, I, what I had said to him was, you know what, you weren't the man I needed you to be in this chronic illness. And I held a lot of resentment for that. And likewise, he held a lot of resentment for me because I wasn't getting up and doing everything I possibly could. Now, again, this was in his eyes at the moment, but that he felt I should be doing to help provide for our family. And when we put this out on the line and we both kind of, uh, you know, when, when we put it out there, it dawned on both of us we put these godly expectations on each other that none of us, none of us can live up to. 
And we do the same thing with the, you know, the people we love in our lives and, and, and ourselves. We can't expect to live up to the things that God is for us. No one on this earth is going to match, uh, match up, I guess. I don't know if that's the right way to say that. But no one is going to live up to that. There's not. We have to recognize that. We have to allow these, this grace for the people in our lives. We just do. In Colossians chapter 3, verse 13, uh, it states, Tolerate the weaknesses of those in the family of faith, forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus Christ. If you find fault with someone, release this same gift of forgiveness to them. We've got to remember that, friends. We've got to remember that we cannot put earthly expectations on, or excuse me, I'm sorry, we cannot put godly expectations on others. We just can't. We're all going to fall short. Every one of us. We just got to remember we have to remember that and we have to offer grace, extend that grace to others and ourselves. So how do we walk in forgiveness? I've said it before, friends. I am, I'm going to keep saying it till I'm blue in the face. I swear. We have got to forge a relationship with God. Forgiveness flows out of a relationship with God. If you want to forgive with some, or excuse me, forgive someone, if you want to forgive yourself, if you want to walk in healing and stop being tormented by the, these awful, horrible feelings and emotions, we've got to lean into God. We've got, to, we have to pursue him. We have to seek him. That's when forgiveness flows is when we're leaning into him. You know, I've, I, again, I've said it before, I apologize, but, but there's a big difference between knowing about God and actually knowing him. And we cannot be transformed until we forge that relationship, until we start leaning into him, pursuing him, and making that ask, until we start learning who God is and who we are in him. Well, how do we do that? We get into the word. We seek him, as I said, seek him for help. Change me, Lord. Reveal to me where I am falling short, Lord. Give me the discernment to know what's coming from you and what isn't. Lord, help me to see the per that person through your eyes. Lord, help me to see me through your eyes. Be honest with him. Lament. Lament is not a bad thing, my friends. I think so often we go through life and we think, oh my gosh, we've got to be this perfect Christian for God. And, and I can't tell him that I'm angry with him, that I'm angry at life, that I'm angry with this other person. No, friend, that's so far. That is like so far from the tr truth. Excuse me. No. Lament shows that we trust God. Lament shows that we have hope in him. You can lament. You can go to him and say, you know what, God? I don't want to forgive them. I am so angry with them right now. I don't want to forgive. But change me, Lord. Three most powerful words you can say. Change me, Lord. Go to him. Seek him. Get into the word so you know what his truths are. So you can recognize when Satan is trying to fill your head with lies and you can say, oh, that's not from my God. That's from Satan. Therefore, I can stand on this truth because I've been getting into the word and I know his truths and his promises. Friend, forgiveness sets you free. It is not about the other person. It's about you. It's about you and the chains of unforgiveness, that bondage that unforgiveness has you in. Release yourself from it. Go to God. Get into the word. And make that ask lament. And, and, and tell him how you're feeling, friends. 
You do not have to sugarcoat it for him. It does not make you a bad Christian when you fall short. It doesn't. We're all going to fall short. God knew that. And that's why he brought in the new covenant. What, and we talked about this a couple uh, episodes ago. What is the new covenant? Is when is Christ's work on the cross because his work on the cross is complete. Because his work on the cross is perfect. It is finished. The very last words he said on the cross, it is finished. We're going to fall short and that's okay. Offer yourself some grace. What was Colossians uh, back here? Tolerate the weaknesses of those in the faith of family. Forgiving one another in the same way you have been graciously forgiven by Jesus. If you find fault with someone, release this same gift of forgiveness to them. And when you don't know how, when you don't feel it, just lift up a thank you because you know that God is with you. You know that God is working. Go to him with a teachable heart. Change me, Lord. I want to forgive. Change me, Lord. I want out of this muck. Friends, sitting in the hard, ugly, messy, hatred, bitterness, anger, guilt, shame, sitting in that, wallowing in it, is not going to get you anywhere. But it, the only place is the only place it's going to get you is for you know to build for it to build and build and build and fester. Those feelings are going to continue to fester in you. There's no way to live. You want to be transformed. You want to experience all that God has planned for you. You first have to walk through forgiveness. You first have to be set free. And the only way to do that is to lean into God, to for, or excuse me, forge a relationship with him, to walk in the freedom of forgiveness. It's beautiful, my friend. It's hard. It's hard, but it's beautiful. And it's worth every painstaking step. And as I've been saying, you know, the you know, stretching that forgiveness muscle, the more you do it, the easier it is going to get. And I'm gonna be honest with you, there are some people in our lives that we will be able, number one, we'll be able to forgive and just let go and move on. And there are others. We have to make that choice every day. We have to make that choice every day. What was it Barbara Lauder said in a few episodes of, or excuse me, several uh, several episodes ago in a Faithful God podcast that she gets the privilege of forgiving her father every day. I think she said something along the lines of, in each day, excuse me, in each day when 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 there's a new memory, you know, one of those painful memories of what happened in the past with her father. Each day she gets the privilege of forgiving him all over again. So there are gonna be some days that we're gonna have to choose over and over and over again to forgive someone. We have to do that. It's not easy, but it's so powerful. It's so freeing. It is so freeing. Stop worrying about the other person. Let's just worry about us. Change me, Lord. So friend, I encourage you this week, be intentional about leaning into God. Be intentional about seeking him and making that ask. Let him know that you are in pain. You're mad. You're angry. You're hurt. You feel so much shame. And thank him because knowing that you are a child of God, that, th that those do not come from God, but that he wants to restore. Here's the thing. We serve a God who restores, who can restore fully. He can restore relationships. He can. But we've got to make that ask. We've got to lean into him. Yes, he is with us all the time. But he gives us free will to lean into him to ask. And that's what we have to do. So friend, this week, I want you to really purpose, really be intentional 
about walking in forgiveness, about choosing forgiveness, about taking that step and leaning into him and saying, change me, Lord. Friend, I want to invite you to hop on over to the blog. We have 10 scriptures on forgiveness. It's a free downloadable printable. I'll put the, uh, excuse me, the notes or the links, excuse me, in the show notes so that you can hop on over and grab that free printable. It is so nice to have that and just, you know, print it off, fold it up, put it in your purse, put it in your back pocket, tape it to your dashboard if you need to. There is nothing better than having scripture and God's truths and promises right where you need them. So you can quickly, quickly remember, oh, wait a minute, those feelings that I have, they're not coming from God. Here's God's truth and pull that printable out. So hop on over and grab that printable. And then next week, join me for another Uh, for the next step in this series. We're going to continue our series on forgiveness. And don't forget to subscribe to the show. And if this show blessed you today, I would love it if you would share it with a friend. And if you're watching me on YouTube, be sure to uh, give me a thumbs up and also comment below. I love connecting with you. I truly do. If you ever have any questions, you want to keep it a little more personal, send me an email at Tammy at FootprintsOfInspiration.com. I love, love communicating with you guys. So you guys go out this week, be intentional about choosing to lean into God because we're going to walk through forgiveness so that you can be set free.